Well, hello everybody. Um, I was spraying corn. Now I just got started for the day. Uh, I did spray some corn last night, but I did not get any video of this. Um, I was spraying that last night. I was just in a hurry and it was getting dark, so I just wanted to get done. I sprayed about 140 acres yesterday. And I started on this field and I ran out and when I got my sprayer loaded up, it was, uh, I never actually got it loaded up last night. I guess I loaded up this morning and now we're out here spraying the uh, corn. Um, again, I'm spraying, it's a chemical called Halex. It's a Callisto Dual and Roundup or Glyphosate. The Callisto is, uh, is a broadleaf pre-emerge herbicide. Uh, and the dual or metulicor is uh, grass pre-emerge, so it actually will keep the grasses and broadleaves growing for hope. I'm hoping for two or three more weeks, and then by that time the corn should be canopied. Um, there's a food plot there. You can see it's it's awful clean, and you, you, I'd like to actually wait until there's a few more weeds in the crop, so I'm actually killing a few more above ground but there are places where there's weeds that, uh, that are pretty bad, so I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it all. And, uh, and the main reason I'm out here spraying a little sooner than I'd really like is because uh, the window with this herbicide that I'm using, um, actually I'm not using actual Halex anymore. I've actually started to blend it all myself. It cuts about $10 an acre, or about half, roughly about half price. Um, to mix it myself, so that's what I've started to do anyhow, and and uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Some people wouldn't be comfortable with that because you got to put three ounces of this and three ounces of that, and just you know it's a little bit of a blending blending deal. But since I used to be a commercial applicator, I guess I'm used to that kind of stuff, mixing and whatnot. But anyhow, back to why I'm spraying it. I've got to spray it before the corn's 30 inches tall. And uh, this corn's pushing 30 inches tall probably. I don't have a tape measure to go out and measure it. Um, I went out and measured some of my corn and it's pushing it. And I, I'd like to get some fertilizing done possibly this week if I decide to go that route. Um, so I just need to get my corn sprayed and this should get me until hopefully it canopies and I shouldn't have to um, I shouldn't have to go out here with the sprayer to kill weeds anymore. I should hopefully get the rest of the year. Here you can tell there's a spot in the soybean field that uh, that was wet, and this actually was really wet in the corn. Uh, I was able to get it planted, but you can see I actually went around that spot over there. Uh, I apologize for moving my head so much, but I've got to keep my, my eyes on what I'm doing and try to keep this sprayer on the rows here. Uh, I'm spraying about 12 mile an hour. Yesterday the wind was blowing when I first started, so I was going um, about seven or eight, I think, or not maybe nine. I think I might have been going nine, but I'm trying to keep my nozzle, my my uh, droplet size smaller, so I didn't have any drift or whatever. Um, this controller, I don't know if I've really gone over this rate controller and how it works a lot. Um, but this rate controller will actually, if I slow down, it'll it'll uh, put on the same chemical per acre, same gallons of water per acre. Um, or if I speed up, as long as I can pump enough water, I can go, you know, in between in between uh, about eight or nine up to about 13 mile an hour. And this rate controller keeps all the all the it does all the math and puts out the right chemical for you so it makes spraying spraying is a lot easier job when you don't have to concentrate on going uh, the correct speed and watching your pressures because i do have gauges down here i'm running about in between 30 and 40 pounds of pressure uh, when i'm going the speed that i'm going um, but there's a soybean field across the road there And uh, for the most part, I guess I'm happy with how the weed, the weed situation. I sprayed that field last night, and in some spots it got drowned out. It's not the best looking corn in the world, but 
um, or you know there's weeds coming in it but for the most part I'm really happy with the with my weed control program that I've got right now um, I'm gonna zoom out so I can see Strip there, I couldn't see. I don't use my auto steer on corn, but my it doesn't drive good enough to follow my rows of corn. Um, I guess it is what it is. I wish it did, but it just don't. Move my line over, so then I can go off my line instead of having to look at the picture. But I straddle four rows of corn, so my wheelbase is 120 inches on this sprayer here. Um, I said it work, works pretty good and and uh, everything um everything seems to be going pretty good with it i guess I mean, not a whole lot to say about it except i'm just spraying corn i to get a drink <clears throat> i was going to try to make a, a video of actually mixing everything I don't know if I'm gonna try to do that because I kind of got a little pattern down and I'm afraid if I start jibber jabbering uh, talking while I'm mixing something I'll end up I'll end up messing up and we don't we don't want that so I think I'm I'm not going to probably not not this chemical not when I'm blending this many things together we'll do it sometime I'm just spraying something simple But thinking about putting a stream and fertilizer across the top of my corn, I wish we had uh, someone out here that could put down an hydrus, but there's no one around here and I'm not gonna do it. We don't even have anywhere local that sells in hydrus, so can't do that. I think that'd be a lot cheaper for my nitrogen instead of stream and liquid on, but um, I guess that's what I'm thinking about doing next week. I've got uh, streamer tips. They shoot out three different streams, and I'm thinking about sliding hoses on them, so I'm shooting down fertilizer every 20 inches. I wish my sprayer was set up on 15-inch uh, spacing on my boom, and then I'd plug every other hole. And uh, and I plug e plug every other hole and. Uh, around so I gotta concentrate on what I'm doing here I'd, so I'd plug every other hole then and and uh, have the fertilizer shoot in between each row but uh, uh, I don't have that uh, I don't have that option right now but I'll probably start this video up here and again at later in a little bit here and I'll get out and check out in the corn and you know, look at some of the corn we've got. Um, for right now, I'm just going to keep on a spraying on this field and I'll, I'll stop on one of the fields today and stretch my legs and walk around and show you guys the, the corn a little bit. So, we'll uh, see you guys on the next part and I hope you enjoy watching. Thanks a lot. Well, good evening everybody here. Um, my wife came out and we shot a drone video. And now I'm gonna finish up my video I started this morning. Um, this is the last field I think I'm gonna get done today. <clears throat> and uh, this isn't the best field that we have. Uh, it's probably one of our poorer fields. Um, it's got some hard pan spots, and the, there's a crick that runs through it, and there's low spots in this field. And uh, so, <clears throat> since we've owned this field, uh, which we've owned it quite a few years now, um, and and you know we've gone no-till obviously on it, and or no-till with everything, but we've uh, actually been able to grow stuff. I'll show you the line where we used to not even plant past very often because it was just a waste of our time up here. And you can see it was wet when I sprayed. I left some pretty good trash um, again. Like I did. I, done, I left a lot of tracks last time I sprayed. Um, but you can see down and through this spot here, the corn's not very good. It's pretty spotty out there. 
<laughs> but considering that this field we used to just kind of consider a waste, um, this field came a long ways. But there's a gate coming up here and around this tree. This is probably one of the weedier fields too, but I'd, I'd imagine that the weed problem is somewhat, somewhat from, uh, um, there's the gate. We used to not raise much to the north of, so that would be behind me. And from here up was pretty good, but we have a problem once we get up to the top of this hill. We're going up a hill right now, and uh, it's really sandy on that end. And uh, it, it really, uh, it's really sandy, so it always used to burn up, but. Um, I feel since we've gone to no-till, it's gotten um, quite a bit better, like uh, a huge amount better. And actually here it would have been a couple of years ago, I spread uh, this whole field, I covered it with manure. And man, that's really helped, I, I think helped the whole field. Um, I'm sure it helped raise our organic matter up. And then it was corn that year, and the next year I guess we planted the soybeans. So then the the um so there's corn after with the manure soybeans then after that it was oats <clears throat> and then we ended up planting the cover crop after our oats which just is one of the fields that um i shot quite a few of my cover crop videos on this winter um i can't tell you which one i guess it was but it was uh you know you can see along here right right up against that grass it's not very good but that is uh, what it is um but anyhow uh, like i said that cover crop i really think helped that bottom out down there on that end and you can see this corn is very short but it's all here um it's starting to hurt a little bit for water you know like i've mentioned before we're we're short on rain pretty bad um but it is what it is we can't change mother nature so you know i guess we'll have to just we'll have to just deal with the cards we're given i know sometimes uh trying new things whether you're trying to try new things or whether you're trying to uh, uh make something work better for you and your operation or or whatever sometimes you just feel like you just need to quit or give up or you know you don't want to do it again um, because you know a lot a lot of times when stuff like that happens it seems like the weather has a huge part in uh, say like a double crop you know a double crop in soybeans and wheat or something like that which we can't do that in this area but don't don't blame the double crop on on the failure if it fails if it was a weather problem because you can't help mother nature you can't outguess mother nature um, it's just what it is. You know, this year, um, that'd be very similar to me saying on my oats, or my rye and my oats ground, that I planted millet on, or I will be planting millet on the oats, I guess, I think, some of it. That'd be similar to me saying, well, you know, I guess since, uh, since we didn't, since we didn't, uh, get a millet crop, you know, we're not gonna do that double crop you know oats and millet or rye and millet anymore it was a failure well it might fail this year but you know i know it worked really good last year and uh you know it's it's, it's mother nature for you you know she she's kind of a pesky little girl to get along with and you know if you're in this game of farming and you know even whether you know anything outdoors you know any kind of job outdoors you know you gotta go abide by the weather and you know you can't help if it don't rain you can't help if it rains a lot you know you just got to work with what you got do the best that you can with what you got and uh, just continue on you know that's just how that's just how the cookie crumbles you know and i think most of the people that probably watch my channel I, i'm pretty sure most of them are in the egg industry anyhow um so it, I really probably don't gotta say anything or you know along the lines of what I'm thinking. But you know, in the egg industry you gotta be awful, awful hardy. Um, you gotta have all your ducks in a row, you gotta think every decision through thoroughly, and uh, you know, just make sure you know what's going on in your business because you gotta make sure you can cover your your 
getting your bills and stuff at the end of the year and you know and I'm not saying everybody that can't cover the bills aren't, aren't doing what they can but um, you know if you try to do your best you know hopefully everything in the end works out that's all you can do is do your best so anyhow I guess I've had a pretty rough day of spraying um, yesterday I sprayed a little I think I talked about that earlier and this morning I got a load sprayed and uh, I got a load sprayed this morning which is 75 acres and and uh, it just seemed like the sprayer wasn't working quite right it just wasn't putting out the right water and uh, so I decided I, I checked the, the filters and I checked some other stuff and and the only thing that was left was I, I thought maybe I had a, a build up inside my Oh, it's a little propeller thing in a line. It's a tube, and uh, there's a deer right there, a dead deer. Um, there's a tube, and then there's a propeller inside that spins, and that's how it tells how many gallons. So I'm thinking something must have got in there and messed with it a little bit. So I went and I cleaned my sprayer. I rinsed my sprayer out um, really good, and kind of started over, I guess. And so far, since then, it's been working. But after I done that, to rinse it out and got reloaded with spray, I went out to go spray and had a hydraulic line blow. The one that holds my tips of my wings out or my booms, the very end, the blow about in the center, I don't know who I'm pointing at the right spot. In the center there it folds when I'm folding it up. And a hydraulic line blew that holds them out. So when I went to stop, my boom just swung boom just swung on in. And it was a uh, I couldn't even move the sprayer. I had to go to town and get a hose built. Luckily, I, there's good mechanics in the area, or a good mechanic in the area that doesn't live too far from a shop, and I'm friends with him somewhat, so I called him, and he said, oh yeah, if you need a hose, I'll, I'll make you a hose, so um, I appreciate him for that, and uh, you know, there's got, need to be more people like that in this world. I'd make this, uh, I'd make this uh, life of ours a lot easier if we had uh, nice and easy people to get along with all around us but that's not always the case anymore but anyhow i guess we're just out spraying along and i think this will probably be the last load i get sprayed today um i've got roughly 300 more acres to spray um so i guess it is what it is i guess i don't know it'd be nice to get more done but I'm afraid my next field that I would spray is about 15 miles away and it's already 8 o'clock so by the time I get my uh, by the time I get my spray in here done man this is really weedy right here I'm, I'm glad I'm spraying it man it's bad really grassy uh, by the time I get done spraying this load and then reloading i don't think i'll have time to go to the next field um if it was just down the road a half mile i probably would but considering it's 15 miles away it's going to take uh quite a while just to drive there so it is what it is i guess we'll we'll quit and hopefully tomorrow the weather's good it looks like the wind's not supposed to blow too bad tomorrow so i'll probably go ahead and get uh started tomorrow at a decent hour and and hopefully nothing goes wrong tomorrow and I can spray about 300 acres tomorrow and uh, call it good for spraying wise um, I'm gonna talk to you guys I think on the way back here one more pass and uh, show you the little spot that still is not doing worth a crap because of the hard pan um, I'm gonna try some other stuff with it I think I keep trying different things with it I know what we've done so far with cover crop and and stuff has helped it quite a bit it's just not to where I want it yet but you know so far like even even right here where I'm at now this is really good corn considering um, that we're dry and stuff and it was really weedy at one point in time I'm sure you guys can see the weeds down there from the first time I sprayed but um, you can see out here in this bottom but there's a crick or a draw that runs through right from those weeds over there across the road and through here so this spot is just a low spot in the field but I really am hoping I can get it to drain better without uh, without you know tiling or anything like that I think in my area grounds not worth tiling um, I'm actually really considering planting this field to alfalfa sometime here 
and uh, like a, a, a grass that'll grow in the bottoms well and use some of that moisture up. And like, uh, comes out of a reed canary or tall wheat or, or something like that. And uh, that'll hold up to them saltine or saline spots a little bit better. So that's what I'm hoping maybe I can do with this field and see if we can get rid of them spots altogether. But like I said, this field has came leaps and bounds since uh, since I remember us buying it. It was not a very productive piece of ground when we bought it. I think we've owned it for, well, I'm 29 I think or so. So I we probably owned it for almost 20 years I guess, 15, 20. I can't remember how old I was when we bought it for sure, but you know, that's uh, a lot of years I guess, but you know, if I can keep improving it my whole life another 20 years down the road when my son's wanting to start helping farm and making decisions or whatever, if he cho chooses to do this uh, job, you know, could be growing 300 bushel corn here, you never know, which I kind of doubt it, but I know uh, there's people around me that say in my lifetime, um, we're going to be raising over 200 bush of corn in this area all the time. I don't know if it'll happen or not, I guess, but, you know, I raised some 200 cor bush of corn last year. Um, we had a lot of rainfall and things just worked right. And, uh, you know, it's just, I think last year was our best year for corn ever, I think, on our farm. And uh, it was really fun combining that good corn. And, I didn't get to combine any of the soybeans. Uh, me and my custom combining buddy, which his name's Ted also, um, we combined his corn together um, like we normally would. And just with what the weather done and whatnot, we ended up, he ended up switching over to combine soybeans and I stayed on combining corn. And by the time he got done with combining soybeans and I got done combining corn, uh, we were done combining. So we never combined any together hardly except for about three days. And uh, we just split everything um, up and divided out the in income from that. Well, my dad, I guess I, I work for my dad and we're custom combining, I guess. But, um, but anyhow, we divvied up that and, and he ended up get, doing all the soybeans. I never I bought a different soybean or flex head last year and I never even got to use it. You can see this ground, maybe you can see on the video, you might, you can tell it's a little bit wet when I'm driving across it yet. It's not, not muddy, but I'm definitely sinking in a little bit, but that's that hard pan ground, like I said. Um, you know, but this, this, this spot progressively getting smaller, so I'm, I'm happy with the progress we're making. I wish it would be overnight, but that's not how things in this industry work. Um, you gotta be patient. If you want instant results, play Farming Simulator. Oh, and that'll get you a lot further with instant results, I guess. Um, I'm not saying Farming Simulator is bad. I'm just saying if you want instant results, don't don't start farming because you'll have a rude awakening. At least Farming Simulator is free. Well, once you buy the game, it's free. Farm the real farming, you know what we're doing here. Yeah, you, once you buy the game, the game is the cheap part. You gotta actually come up with all that cash to make it work. But I think I average average enough for this here video. Um, I'm glad. I, I hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing here. Um, I guess I don't really care who watches my videos. Whoever wants to, I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all the comments that you guys been leaving on them. Um, you know, and it's just, it is what it is. I, I, I'll try to do more repair videos as I'm doing them, but it just seems like I'm always behind and I don't really have time to plan to do a repair video. Um, but I really want to do more of them for everybody. I think them are teaching some of the younger kids or guys out there that are just starting out or even if they're still in school yet, they can learn that they can fix things themselves. And, and if you got the time, which time's very, very valuable on a farm, valuable on a farm anymore, but if you got the time to fix things yourselves, um, that's a huge savings. And it also helps, you don't have to spend quite as much on equipment if, uh, if you can 
if you can if you have the knowledge and the skills to repair it yourself <coughs> um it won't always work out that way um that you do have the time or the skills but you know minor repairs it's good to be able to do them things yourself and not have to hire somebody because when somebody starts charging you a hundred dollars an hour to to do a time consuming job it's uh, it adds up but as I said, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys following me on here and whatnot. I guess we'll uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.